And I'm going to record this session as well. Uh, so if you wish to review it later, uh, we will be sending out a link to the recording later today. And uh, you can certainly follow back up on that. For those of you that are just viewing the recording now after watching the USA versus Germany in the World Cup, uh, we'd like to welcome you now as well. So thank you very much uh, to everybody else who is joining us live. Uh, it is greatly appreciated. So again, my name is Brian Thomas. I'm a systems engineer here with Dream Factory. And today we'll be talking about the Dream Team suite of tools for project management and especially with our relationship with Salesforce. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let me go ahead and pull up Dream Team. So here we are in our browser and we've got uh, Dream Factory, uh, Dream Team suite running here. And as you can see, as mentioned with regards to Salesforce, it's launched as a tab from within your Salesforce org. Uh, or you can even get to it from a drop-down menu on the right. But again, we are 100% native to Salesforce. And now as you look at this, it looks like your standard Gantt chart-based project management solution. And largely it is. And if you've worked with MS Project, it's likely going to look very familiar to you. Uh, and in fact, we've borrowed it very liberally from MS Project. Uh, but there's some distinct advantages to Dream Team. And again, a lot of those have to do with our relationship with Salesforce and also the fact that it's a, a cloud-based application. So one of the biggest advantages is the fact that it's a very collaborative tool. And we'll talk quite a bit about this as we go through the webinar today. But for example, from this projects drop-down, if I wanted to, I could select share project link. And this is something that you can see again, and we'll see this as we look at our document manager and some of our reports as well. But again, it's very easy to collaborate with Dream Team. So for example, I can log in here with my Salesforce credentials. If I want, I can password protect a link to this project, uh, set expirations on it if I wish. And then I can send this link via Microsoft Outlook, via the webmail that exists through Salesforce, or I can just copy it to the clipboard and paste it back into any other communication that I may use. But once that link is created, the recipients can just bookmark that URL and then they can log in at any time and get a real-time read-only view of the Gantt chart and see exactly where we are in the project. So again, this is a big advantage over traditional Gantt charts in that traditionally if you were to send out an update to an external resource or a client, and perhaps they let it you know, sit in their inbox all week. So now they get to Friday and they finally open it. Now half the tasks have been completed or half the project's been completed and they're requesting a whole new Gantt chart. So this is just a great way to keep everybody in the loop, let everybody see everything in, in real time. Great. All right. So again, the biggest advantage that we have is the fact that we are 100% native to Salesforce. And for those of you uh, that are using the question wizard, please continue to fill that out. And I will, again, address all questions at the end of the session today. Uh, but uh, absolutely, please continue to, to address those. So again, collaboration and the ability to collaborate and share information with external clients, external resources, uh, as well as internal team members uh, is certainly key and one of the big uh, factors in selecting Dream Team. Uh, our, probably one of the biggest advantages that we have is, again, our native relationship to Salesforce.com. So that gives us a lot of advantages. Again, we already mentioned the ease with which you can launch Dream Team from right within Salesforce, but it's also very easy to link any of your projects to specific objects and records within Salesforce. So if I go into my project properties, for example, I can see that this California Memorial Hospital project has been linked to the California Memorial Hospital account, and it's also been linked to this EMR upgrade opportunity under that account. And if we want, we can expand that further. So we can link this to a case or a campaign or a lead, anything we want to link this to in Salesforce, we can make this visible there. Okay. Now just to show you what that looks like on the Salesforce side, if I were to go into my opportunities, for example, you know, let's select that EMR upgrade opportunity. So now I'm in the opportunity record for this EMR upgrade that we just saw. And as I scroll down, now I have a Dream Team Projects field visible on my page layout. So I can view all the projects that have been linked to this particular opportunity. So obviously you can have multiple projects off of one opportunity or one account or whatever it may be. So if I select that California Memorial Hospital project, 
Now I've got full visibility into my project from the salesforce.com side. So for example, I can come in here, I can even watch a Gantt chart from within Salesforce. So this is a custom link, whoops, let me get the plug in. So this is the, uh, the link that uh, can be very quickly created. And then you can again, launch your Gantt chart from directly within Salesforce. And if I close that and continue to scroll down, then I can see various custom fields that have been added. So these are all very easy to add custom fields. And again, this is part of the appeal of Dream Team, especially for so many Salesforce administrators. It's not a whole other application necessarily that they need to manage. All of these fields have been added through the Salesforce user setup. Um, you know, any of the triggers or modifications we talk about are all done from within Salesforce. So again, it's not one more, it's really just a, a nice add-on to your existing org. So again, things like fixed cost, consulting budget, project budget, these are custom fields that have been added. And again, they have been can be very easily viewed from right here on the Salesforce side. As I scroll down, I can also see other Salesforce objects, so notes and attachments, open activities. These would be Salesforce activities, so Salesforce events or Salesforce tasks. I can view those here uh, as they relate to this particular project. Also very easy to create these directly out of Dream Team as well. I can create these Salesforce tasks or uh, events for any of my users. And then as I scroll down, now I can see the Dream Team objects. So the Dream Team tasks, resources, action items, highlights, issues, timesheets, so on and so forth. So again, this is a tremendous advantage for an organization where perhaps you have some people maybe in the, the finance group that don't necessarily need full access to your project management tool, but would like to be able to see everything in real time as it pertains to a particular project, especially in terms of cost and, and things of that nature. So this is a great, again, a great way for people that have access to Salesforce to view some of this information without necessarily needing full access to Dream Team as well. Okay. One of the other things you can see here for any of your organizations that really like to take advantage of Chatter, again, you can display all the Chatter posts related to this project. So rather than you know hunting through all of your Chatter feeds, this is a great way just to see as it pertains just to this particular project. Again, very easy to create Chatter posts or create events or tasks for your users directly from Dream Team as well. And as we'll show you in a moment, it's also a unified calendar that we use in Dream Team, so you can see all this information there as well. Okay. Now the biggest advantage that we have with our native relationship in Salesforce is for those clients that are running either enterprise or unlimited editions. And the reason being because that opens up a lot of possibilities for us to really streamline and uh, just uh, generally automate your project creation process. So for example, a lot of our clients will, when an opportunity goes to closed one, for example, they may use that as a trigger to create a whole new project in Dream Team. So, and again, this can be done with full automation or it can be done with some, some manual steps as well. So for example, if you wanted to do from within your opportunity record, uh, you could set this up where you've got a button now where you can create a new Dream Team project. And you could go in and fill in some of the basic information as far as the name, uh, your start date, so on and so forth. And this, again, it can all be created to suit your taste. So once you filled in this information, uh, you know, hit save, and then that just creates a whole new project template for you in Dream Team. That whole process can be fully automated as well, where once, you know, that trigger event happens, say that opportunity goes to closed one, then it just automatically creates the full project for you in Dream Team. So there's a lot that we can do there to simplify and automate your process for you. Uh, through the use of workflows, uh, we can streamline notifications. So if a task is running late and you want to create a workflow to notify all the team members on that task that that task is falling behind, you can certainly do that. So there's a lot that we can really do to leverage those Salesforce tools to, again, automate things for you and to improve the uh, efficiency of your communications as well. Okay. So I'm going to go back to Dream Team for just a moment. And again, as I mentioned, I did want to show you the calendar application. This is the really the hub for any of your project resources. So for those folks that are not you know, creating projects on a day-to-day -day basis or doing the day-to-day -day management of those, but more or less need to see the things they're responsible for, uh, as well as anything that they might be working for in Salesforce, we can certainly accommodate that here in the project calendar. 
So this application, again, is where I can log in as a user and see exactly what I'm responsible for on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, as we've got it here. And I can also update the status of these. So the blue and the pink, these are my Dream Team project tasks. So I can click on these, update the status. So if I've completed that, I can hit OK. And now that's going to turn to blue on my calendar there, showing that this task has been completed. It's also going to turn to blue on the Gantt chart and alert the project manager that that's been taken care of. But again, I mentioned this is a fully unified calendar with Salesforce. So these other colors, the orange, for example, these are what we call to-dos. Now, to-dos are just Salesforce tasks, and we call them to-dos to avoid confusion with our project tasks. But those can easily be seen out here. You can also create them here as well. So again, they're visible on this calendar and on the Salesforce calendar as well. Uh, purple here is just a Salesforce event. And again, we can see and create those here. Uh, and this is especially important. You can also see these as a project manager before you assign a resource to a task. So if someone's got a week's worth of vacation here, for example, as I do as I'm logged in here as Josh, I could see that before I assign a representative to a task and know that even though he's clear of any other Dream Team tasks, he still has some obligations that are marked on his Salesforce calendar as events. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about, again, Salesforce and how we can leverage some of those tools. I mentioned you know, triggers and workflow. One of the other great tools that we can take advantage of is the, is the great uh, reporting capabilities that you have in Salesforce. So here, for example, I'm on my home page, or on Josh Hyde's home page. But you can see I've got some dashboards here that are built exclusively from Dream Team project data. So here we've got a project schedule dashboard, working actual hours, uh, I'm going to look at uh, sum of time versus uh, individual projects. So these can all be very easily created in your Salesforce reports. So to create a new report would do just as we ordinarily would in Salesforce, um, just to walk you through here very quickly. And then it would be under your other reports, you've got a whole list of Dream Team reports that you can build. So again, our data is Salesforce data, so you can easily build any of these reports right here. Uh, if I go back to my list of reports, we can see you know, that these can easily be converted to dashboards. So for example, if I go into some of my dashboards here, you know, we've got a whole range that we can build uh, in Salesforce. Okay? So the, the options are really unlimited there. Additionally, we do have our own reporter tool in Dream Team, and that's what we're looking at here. So we've got these seven pre-built reports that are very easy to access, very easy to create. Uh, as far as dashboards are concerned, we have some, several of our own that are pre-built. And you can see this is probably the most commonly used. This is just a, a project schedule dashboard where we can see how we're doing on our task completion. So anywhere we're in the green, we're obviously here ahead of schedule or right on schedule. Yellow, we're starting to fall behind. And then obviously in the red, we're falling way behind. So we have several of these reports that are available. Uh, we have several tabular reports that are available as well. All of these are exportable. So any of these reports that if you want to export, uh, the tabular reports can be exported out to a CSV. Any of the dashboard views can be exported to a visual file. And, but all of them can be uh, exported certainly to, to other applications that will take that CSV import if you need to use this data with something that's not native to Salesforce. Otherwise, any other financial applications or other tools that you're working with that are native to Salesforce or are integrated with Salesforce, they can simply leverage our data, again, because our data is Salesforce data. Okay. One of the applications I want to especially highlight here for you today is our document manager application. And again, because we are native to Salesforce, any documents that we're accessing here are physically stored in Salesforce. But we built the document manager to give you some tools and some capabilities that, that didn't exist in Salesforce as far as organizing those documents. So as you see, as I log in, I've got all my folders here to the left. And if I click on any of these, I can see the various subfolders. And I can see all these documents here. So PDFs, JPEGs. Uh, you can store anything that you can store in Salesforce, you can access and manage through the document manager. Okay. And as I go to look at any of these, I can see them either from the icon view or from a list view as well. And we also built in the ability to do document versioning. 
So as we go through, you can see we've got multiple versions of the same document. This has been very popular with our clients, especially those that like to have their documents in a final form for any of their clients, uh, but without having them all marked up in Word, for example. So you can always have this final form ready to go, but be able to see the earlier versions of those documents as well. Now, if I get to launch any of these, we also built in a check-in, check-out process for these documents. So as I go to launch this, it's going to first let other users know that I've got that document locked and open for editing. So if I were to take off on a three-hour lunch, at least they'll know who's got that document. But it does prevent anybody from going in there and making any changes while I'm also trying to edit that document as well. So now that I'm in, let's see, I can go ahead and correct this. Let's say I want that color to be consistent. So I can alter that color there and save my changes. And now as I exit Word and go back into the Document Manager, it'll highlight the document, let me know that it's ready to upload. And now at this point, I can either replace the original, make a new version, or if I don't want to save my changes, I can just remove it from the list and be done. But for now, let me go ahead and make a new version. And that'll bring me up to version 6 of that document. Okay. So once again, with the document manager, with the reporter, and with the Gantt chart, collaboration is, is key uh, because obviously you may want to share this information uh, with internal resources, clients, external resources, whomever. So it's very easy to share this information. For example, I can just right click on an individual document, create a document link, or I can right click on a folder and select share folder link, or from the folders drop down, select share share folder link. And again, this will open up that window like we saw with the Gantt chart, where again, I'll log in with my Salesforce credentials. If I want, I can password protect this link, set expirations on it. And then again, I can send it out via Outlook, via the webmail through Salesforce, or just copy it to a clipboard, paste it back into the Gantt chart or wherever I might need it. But again, once that link is created and shared, the recipient can just log in here and see whatever documents and folders I've chosen to share with them at whatever permission level. So one thing I failed to highlight here, if I were to create this link, I can keep these documents read-only as the Gantt chart is read-only, or I can expand that so I can make it read and create so that they can upload any new documents to that folder or give them full access so they can either edit or also do document versioning with any of those documents as well. And again, this can be shared with anyone. So whether they're internal or external to our organization, as long as they've got a, an email address and a web browser, essentially, that's all they need to come in and view these documents just as we've created those permissions. And to that end, I can always come back, manage these folder links, see exactly what links were created. If there's no email address, I can see that that was just copied to the clipboard. But I can see when the links were created, any expiration date, last time they were visited, the number of times they were visited, and if someone is no longer a client or no longer an external resource, I can just highlight that link and delete it, or if they've misplaced it and they want me to send it again, I can just very easily copy it and send that out to them once again. Okay. So that is the document manager, and just to go back again to our reports, just to point out too a couple other um, items in our Salesforce reporting structure. Uh, you can certainly again build any report on any of your Dream Team project data directly in Salesforce. And there would be some advantages again to creating them in Dream Team just so you're aware that you do have that capability. So again if I go into my sample reports here, and as you build out these reports, as you first launch your reporter tool, it'll bring you to this tab for projects and resources, and this is where you can select any of your saved reports or build a new one from scratch. So if you want to do some portfolio or some you know, pure program management, this is a great place to come in and you can filter those projects. So if you want to see just your projects involving your retail clients in the southwest or just your manufacturing clients in the northeast, you can certainly you know, filter those down to a very granular level. Uh, you can also look for your projects from a list or do a reverse lookup by ownership or by resources and save these. You can give them a unique name, description, and you can even mark them private for your own use as well. Okay. But to start in some of our samples, and again, I've already shown you the dashboards and the standard report, but to show you the resource availability and resource leveling reports, 
these are two that really rely on the Dream Team calculation engine. So again, there's so much that you can do to leverage in Salesforce, but this is one that uh, really runs on Dream Team. And as we look at this, you can see it'll do some of the color coding for you. So obviously in our demo org, we have some real workhorses here. Um, but I can get a breakdown on you know, where these hours are coming from. So it's going to color code for me where any of my resources exceed eight hours a day. So eight hours or fewer, it's going to shade in green. Uh, anything from eight hours up to 12 hours is going to highlight in yellow. And then anything beyond that 12, it's going to shade in red. So I can drill into this. I can see exactly where those hours are getting made up. Oftentimes, this is a, a project manager mistake. So as a project manager, I may have booked somebody inadvertently on a you know one-day task that should have been booked as a one-hour task. Uh, so perhaps that's the, the explanation for you know, somebody being booked for 16 hours. Um, Otherwise, I can certainly use this for forecasting. I can see you know, who else might be available to take on some of that time. So as I scroll through, I believe everybody's at the bottom of the list here. So for Patrick, I can see, wow, somehow we got a 16 hours on this analysis task. So that's, that's probably a project management error. But if this were a case where he was just simply overbooked, I could continue to scroll through and see, well, Tom's wide open. Tom can take on some of those hours. Or for forecasting purposes, I can look out and see how Tom looks for you know, the rest of the week. Okay. Um, resource leveling, what I'm speaking to do really a lot of the same things. However, the focus here is really more on the individual. So I can just pinpoint an individual that I need and say if I want to see next quarter, how does Josh look for projects? I can load Josh's schedule. Josh looks wide open. Uh, Patrick, I can see, is a little bit booked at the start of July. And Tom is way overbooked. So again, this is a great tool for forecasting with the focus more on an individual uh, rather than as a group as a whole. Okay. So that is the project reporter. And really, that is uh, one of the reports to show you here as well. Time and expense is a fantastic tool that really leverages that information that we collect in the project calendar. So I showed you the calendar earlier, which is a unified calendar with Salesforce where you can uh, view the tasks and events uh, Salesforce tasks and events as well as your project tasks. Uh, but you can also enter time sh uh, sheet information and expense information there as well. And then this can really be tracked here in this time and expense report. Now again, this can very easily be built out of Salesforce, this particular report. But you can view it here very quickly and easily. Uh, see now your time logged, so that's coming from the calendar application. So your time logged are actual hours versus your planned hours and really get a good feel now for your actual versus planned cost, revenue, and profit based on your labor costs. And then you can also add additional fields out here as well. So if you have some materials costs you need to see. So there are a lot of great tools here for looking at the financial uh, aspects of any of your projects. And again, you can export these to a CSV if need be, uh, or uh, you can also convert these over to a bar chart or a pie chart right here within Dream Team as well. So at that point, this kind of brings us to the end here of our webinar for today. Um, again, I'm going to open it up for uh, any particular questions that we have, and we'll certainly address those. And as we go through, uh, first question is, can Dreamport, Dream Team import MS project files? Absolutely. Um, and let me just minimize this for a moment. Uh, from the projects dropdown, you can import or export to or from uh, MS project. So here, for example, I can import from MS project as an XML file. So you'd want to just save any of your projects in MS project as an XML, and then you can upload that here to Dream Team. Uh, we can also import from a CSV. So if you're working with another application or if you just have been tracking things in Excel, we can upload that here as well. Uh, for both instances, there's a little bit of massaging the data that needs to be done. On CSVs, it's more on the, the front end, making sure we get it on the proper format to upload. Uh, and for MS Project, it's also on more on the back end as far as making sure we've got the resources mapped out correctly. So typically speaking, these are done really just kind of help us load historical data. And then once in Dream Team, it's very easy to duplicate projects. Uh, so once you've got some of that historical data in the Dream Team, it's very easy to copy it and reuse it for new projects again and again. Okay. Uh, next question, within the view mode, uh, high tasks that are internal, or do they all show? Um, there's really no means of suppressing the Gantt chart. 
So you, there's not really a way. The one thing you could do, certainly, if you want to group them together, you can minimize them by minimizing a summary task. So phase one, for example, I just click to minimize that and, and not display it. There's not really a way of making it invisible, however. Uh, so, but you could certainly um, you know, create a report, either in Salesforce or in Dream Team, and then edit that report so that you're showing only what you want to show. So especially if you want to share that with a client, uh, you can do it that way. Um, can you use Dream Team with Professional Edition in Salesforce? Yes, absolutely. This can be used with Professional. Uh, it does certainly lose some of the, the features and functionality in terms of triggers, workflow, uh, profile management, and the, the really some of the core features that you lose from professional to enterprise or unlimited, uh, but you can certainly use Dream Team with professional as well. Can you access documents offline or do you have to be logged in? You would need to be online, so you would need to have some access. However, you can sync your folders with the document manager. So if you wanted to make them available for offline use, uh, you can very easily uh, do a sync through the document manager and then share those on a local drive or a shared drive and uh, again do that sync when you come back online and make sure everything's up to date. Uh, external members don't need to have be Salesforce users to access the documents. That is correct. So you can share these documents with anyone. Uh, as long as they've got an email address, uh, a web browser essentially, you can share these and they will be able to access those whether they're internal or external. Um, I would like to see a drill down into how you manage project budgets over the course of a project. Uh, Jen, absolutely. This is a, a great question. I would encourage you at the end, I'm going to give some uh, contact information for Noel Guzman. Uh, if you can set up uh, or follow up with Noel, and we'll set up a call where we can give you some specifics on how we really drill in and, and some of the things you can do to, to manage budgets. Uh, one of the things, just to show you quickly, if I'm setting my reports up, uh, I'll just, just show you a quick example of a report that we have available. So if you can see this, I'm not sure if the questions are in the way, but this is just a, a quick example of a kind of a burn report that's been created where you can see project budget, fist cost, consulting budget, and we even work this down into um, you know, an effective hourly rate. So there's a lot of things you can do, and again, a lot of this is gets done with Salesforce and the custom fields that you can add. So this is another great example of, of where Salesforce's power can be leveraged through the use of formula fields that you can create in Salesforce. We can create all kinds of different financial reports where you can leverage the Dream Team project data uh, with a specific formula field and spit out whatever numbers you need. So absolutely, if, if you can uh, follow up with Noel, and we'd love to set up a time and we can discuss that a little bit further in a, a private demo. Um, how many training hours do you receive? This is a great question. Uh, every license recipient, uh, well, as a whole, as a company, every client receives one hour of custom private training, but there's unlimited training through our Wednesday public sessions. So every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have a one hour private, uh, public session where we can get into some very granular uh, aspects of creating projects and using the Dream Team tool. There's lots of room for Q&A at the end. So definitely encourage everybody to go through that. And then as people get their feet wet using the tool through the public training, we do schedule that one hour private session so we can really drill down on some best practices and some things for uh, specific um, uh, users will, will encounter. Okay. And as far as support, I'll cover that as well. Um, Dream Team uh, support is available from 8 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, and you can uh, access them either by launching a live chat. Whoops, excuse me. Let me get back into my Firefox there. Uh, so you can launch a live chat, or you can bring up their their phone number uh, to call them. And again, they're available 8 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. And if it's after hours for you, uh, you can also watch a training movie for each application within Dream Team. So there's one for each of the five apps, including the, the project manager, the document manager, uh, the reporter tool, the calendar. So there's a, a training movie in there for all of those. Uh, and you can also connect to our wiki for product support uh, and search through there for, for any documents as well if it's after hours. Uh, a few more questions here. Can the document manager be linked to an external um, such as Dropbox? 
Um, not necessarily. It's it's well, you could because you can certainly link it to like a shared drive or an external application. Um, we do see some clients do that, and then or they more or less will just use Dropbox or another app for their document management and create a link for a document to there. So you can very easily share a link. Uh, again, either on the Gantt chart, which will make it available to all of the resources, or you can create a notification from within Dream Team and share a link uh, via Chatter, for example. So you could point that to your, your Dropbox location as well instead of our document manager if you wished. Okay. Um, let's see, got a few more questions here. Um, how does it track project budgets approved versus actual hours, for example? Uh, again, all this is really done in the reporting. So you can you can also see on the, the Gantt chart too, you can see some, some actual versus planned hours. Uh, you can add those as fields here on the Gantt chart. So you can view them there, but it's really best done in uh, the reporting structure. So again, like that time and expense report that I mentioned, or you can build any kind of a custom report and really drill into some of your, your financials on actual versus planned hours, for example. Uh, does the tool provide opportunity for uh, project prioritization view for executives essentially to see all projects in a single view? Yes, again that would be done in the reports. Uh, obviously as far as Gantt charts are concerned, it's really just one project that you can view on a Gantt chart. Now if you, depending on your organization and how you typically perform your projects, you could conceivably have one extremely large project with several different phases that you organize with summary tasks so that there could be a graphical view of all of your projects. More often than not though, um, our, our clients will really leverage the reporting tools, again, to do some real program management and portfolio management and see just you know, certain groups of projects all in one view. Um, when you share with the client, can you restrict their access to certain features? Uh, yes, now with the Gantt chart, again, it's read only. But and it can't be suppressed. So if you're sharing the Gantt chart, just be advised that the client's going to be able to see all of it. So if you built in any wiggle room in any of your projects, for example, and you don't want them to see that, it's best to go ahead and create a report either in Salesforce or on Dream Team, and then share that report of just the, the information you want them to see. So there you can kind of cherry pick and just show them you know certain sets of tasks or whatever information, and allow them to see it that way. Uh, when you share with the client, can you restrict their access to certain features? Uh, no, nope, so that's what we address. Okay, and I believe that's all the questions that we have. If there's anyone I missed, I know there's a, a lot of questions. I think we covered all of them. Uh, for any of the ones I missed, please feel free to email me. I'm going to throw up some email addresses here. Uh, there we go. And let me click to the next slide. There we go. So if you've got any questions, please feel free, again, uh, for those that have expressed an interest in seeing some uh, deeper views, please reach out to Noel Guzman, either at the email address there that's listed, Guzman at dreamfactory.com, or you can reach him uh, directly at 408-796-4657. Um, I'm going to jump leave this up here for just a moment. And there is a promotional offer right now for anybody that's coming on board and activating their license by July 31st. You will receive one free month when activating those licenses. Okay. Uh, so if you do have any questions on any of the pricing per, pricing per license, again, please reach out to Noel. Uh, also, if you'd like to set up any other uh, demos, or if you just have any additional questions on top of today's seminar, that anything that we didn't uh, discuss or didn't address, please forward those to Noel, and I will uh, respond to those uh, also. Uh, but again, definitely encourage you to try that. And just to be aware too, we do offer a free trial of Dream Team. There is a 15-day trial available. All you need to do is go to the app exchange within Salesforce, download Dream Team, and run the license manager. So you just go into that support icon that we showed earlier run the license manager and select that you want to evaluate. And it is a full-blown trial, so you have full access to all five applications in the Dream Team suite uh, with no restrictions. And again, it'll give you 15 days to really kick the tires and find out whether that's something that, that you'd like to use. Uh, and beyond that, again, I encourage you to reach out to Noel if you'd like to schedule a private demo uh, where we can be a little more focused on your individual company's specific needs. Okay. Uh, but with that said, I'd like to thank everybody again for joining. Um, and hope everybody has a great afternoon. Again, please feel free to follow up with any questions. 
and uh, hope everybody has a great remainder of the week and a great weekend.